Now there are certain uh, properties of a TCP connection that makes it very good. So one of that property is flow control. Okay, so flow control is a back off mechanism implemented to prevent sender from overwhelming the receiver, which means that if this is the sender node and this is the receiver node. Now sender can send a packet and it can go ahead and send the second packet without acknowledgement. So this ability of sending multiple packets without acknowledging is known as uh, the bandwidth of each bandwidth of each uh, node. So basically the amount of bandwidth that this particular sender would have is the is the, is the amount of segments it can send without getting an acknowledgement back. So what happens in this case is that if the bandwidth is too big, then the sender will keep on sending the packets and without receiver acknowledging that the packets has been received. This can do two things. So if let's say sender sent a lot of packets and receiver is not able to process all of them, then receiver's bandwidth window, uh, receiver's bandwidth will fill. Because um, bandwidth take it as like this is the band bandwidth array and with each coming array which is uh, coming segment which is not processed segment 1 will come here segment 2 will come here segment 3 will come here and depending on the size of the bandwidth if they don't get acknowledged in the correct time the bandwidth uh, bandwidth will get filled and then uh, the receiver won't be able to accept any new packets so for th in that case the sender needs to know when to rate limit the amount of packets it is transmitting so this is a mechanism with, which is implemented in TCP that it rate limits the bandwidth size and it rate limits the amount of packets server can send without getting an acknowledgement from the receiver. So this is flow control. So the sender if it is respecting the protocol avoids sending more data than receiver can receive in its buffer. So this is the buffer. Okay. So this mechanism is not too dissimilar to rate limiting at service level. But rather than rate limiting on an API key or IP address, TCP is a rate limiting on a connection level. So on the connection level, you will limit here rather than on IP address or API key level. Okay. So this is uh, first benefit of TCP and the second is congestion control. So TCP not only guards against overwhelming the receiver, but it also against flooding the underlying network. So what happens is that the sender estimates the available bandwidth of the underlying network empirically through measurements, right? So now the sender and this is the receiver, sender and again receiver. Now the sender maintains a congestion window. So congestion window. This represents the top, total number of outstanding segments that can be sent without acknowledgement uh, from the other side. So let's say size of the window is 20. That means the sender can send uh, 20 segments without receiver acknowledging. Okay, so this is congestion window. Now what happens is that Si uh, the size of the receiver's window limitation limit is the maximum size of the congestion window. So the size of the receiver's window limits. So the congestion limit is basically the size. The congestion limit of the receiver is the is where the connection between two have an upper cap, right? So, so the smaller the congestion window is, the fewer bytes can be in flight at any given time, and less less bandwidth can be utilized, right? So a larger congestion window means that more bytes can be transferred without acknowledgement and a smaller congestion window means that a less number of segments can be transferred without getting an acknowledgement from the receiver. So when a new connection is established, the size of this congestion window is set to a system default. So if a new congestion, uh, a new, sec a new connection is so uh, established, so congestion window size is let's say 
congestion window the size of the congestion window is let's say 20 right this which is a system default uh, it is not the correct value but it is set to a system default okay now for any segment which is received or acknowledged this window size increases exponentially so let's say if one segment is increased and it is acknowledged also by the receiver then this uh, this congestion window side will size will become 25 let's say and so on exponentially it increases to a upper limit it will exponentially increase to the upper limit and once the full network capacity of a connection is established then we can you know utilize the full bandwidth of our network but that does not happen until a later point of time so the lower the round trip time the quicker the sender can utilize the full bandwidth that means is so the congestion window is less in the start and upper limit as the connection works stably so that means if a round trip time rtt if this is high if rtt is high that means all all segments would not be acknowledged immediately so there will be some gap in acknowledgement from the receiver end now if rtt is high that means it will take more time for the uh, congestion window to reach its upper limit that's why it is said that if rtt or round trip time is lower the connection can start utilizing the full network bandwidth at a smaller uh, at, at a quicker time right now what happens if a se if a segment is lost like we said that if the segment is acknowledged then this congestion window increases but what if a segment is lost so if the segment is lost the connection window decreases in a same exponential way so that means it is a trade off of increase when acknowledged and decrease when lost so this is how congestion window is, works and this de de uh, the process of decreasing when the segment is lost is known as congestion avoidance that means that the rtt is so high that it uh, the, the our receiver can't acknowledge it on time that means we should not be using that many uh, should not be sending that many segments at one time right so from there onwards the passing time the segment uh, the increasing of the window time increases on the acknowledged segments and decreases on any other uh, case right so this is this was for the congestion control now there is something which is known as bandwidth now bandwidth is equals to window size divided by round trip time now the equation shows that the bandwidth is a function of latency the tcp will try very hard to optimize the window size since it can't do anything about the round trip time however that doesn't always yield the optimal configuration due to the way congestion control works the lower round trip time is better the underlying network bandwidth is utilized so if rtt is lower bandwidth will get increased that's why we put you know servers closer to each other geographically because that will decrease the round trip time now these were some of the properties of tcp congestion control flow control and the way the connection is set up now we also have some custom protocols one such is udp so tcp's all has all these reliability and stability which comes along with tcp because tcp has properties such as congestion control uh, flow flow control and all of this this all comes with the price of lower bandwidth and higher latencies because for every segment you need need an acknowledgement and that increases the latency that your network is having but for some sometimes you need to deliver packets without thinking of acknowledgement even if one or two packets are lost they don't end up uh, damaging the whole intent of data transfer that much so in such cases udp is uh, udp is 
preferred. UDP is user datagram protocol. Now, unlike TCP, UDP does not expose the abstraction of a byte system stream to its client. So, client can only send discrete packets called datagram. So, this is uh, server. This is client. So, no segment or byte stream in this. It just transfers this datagram to the client and client does not even have to acknowledge that. It just it is just one way flow traffic. So UDP will send and there are no sequence numbers that uh, and they are not even required to be acknowledged. UDP does not implement flow and congestion control either. UDP is basically a lean and bare bone protocol. It uses boost bootstrap custom, pro, uh, custom protocols which provide some but not all of the stability and reliability guarantee that TCP does. So where UDP is used? So in games. The data transfer is so high that even if one or two packets are lost, they don't end up changing the flow of the game. If one of the byte is lost, if one of the pixel is a bit lighter, you won't see that effect and it will be instantaneously gone before you can even notice that. So in such cases, UDP protocol is better. So for video streaming, for gaming, in all of those cases, UDP is used. TCP is when you have to send data reliably and you have to actually check that your data has been transferred and you have to monitor that. So these are the two custom protocols that I'll be discussing in this video, uh, TCP and UDP and these actually sum up for the reliable links of communication between two processes. So thank you, see you in the next video.